What's going on guys? Stefan here with you, s &E's Garage. Today we're in here putting the finishing touches on our 2012 Kia Forte here. Um, if you've been following on the channel, you'll know we did the alternator, we did the valve cover gaskets, we did an oxygen sensor, and we did a camshaft actuator, an oil control valve. Um, and then we went ahead off camera, we hosed this engine off, cleaned it, looks real good. Uh, we went ahead and we took care of the interior, we did an ozone treatment on it. We shampooed the carpets, front and rear, and we removed the tint. Now, we are going to be tackling the rear brakes and we are going to be replacing the missing wheel studs. No wheel studs, sorry, lug nuts that we have back here. And then we're also to put the icing on the cake, going to be doing the front sway bar end links. Uh, so this video is going to be a rear brake replacement on one of these Fortes. Um, this should be very similar to the Hyundai Elantra and a couple of other Hyundai Kia vehicles. So I'm going to, you know, I'll put all of them in the video description just so you kind of know what this will work for. But we're going to go ahead, we're going to get you set up. We're going to lift this up on our quick jacks, get the wheels off of it, and take it from there. All right, guys, so we have our happy little helper, Maverick, here with us. He's going to hold the flashlight today. Say hi. <laughs> so what I went ahead and did is we got both of these rear brakes off, or rear wheels off, rather. And what I had to do on this side is one of the studs was actually damaged. So I cleaned it up here uh, with a tap, so a lug nut will thread onto that. But what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to get a 14 millimeter socket and ratchet. We're going to crack this loose and this loose and then we're going to get our caliper up and out of the way and we're going to compress it just to make sure that it is not seized or anything like that thanks for the light mav all right so let's get you set up on the tripod and uh let's start pulling these apart all right guys we got our 14 millimeter wrench here we're just going to go ahead crack this loose like so oh, take the bottom one crack it loose like so okay we're gonna put these bolts off to the side and we're going to pull this caliper off oh, where is that? that's the caliper so now i'm going to go ahead i'm going to get my lyle or lang rather caliper compressor i'll leave one of these in the video description below and we're going to go ahead and compress this caliper so let me go ahead get the get the tool and we'll compress it so this is going to be a Lang 277. I do have one of these in my Amazon store. And I also will, like I said, leave one in the video description. This makes compressing calipers so easy. This is literally all you have to do is ratchet this and it compresses the caliper. And once we get this caliper compressed, we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna go ahead and pull this caliper bracket off. They should be held on with, they also look like they are 14 millimeter bolts. Okay, that is compressed. Get our tool out of the way. <laughs> That's the exhaust, buddy. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this caliper bracket off. All right, guys, like I said, it is a 14 millimeter. Just gonna go ahead, break them loose. Okay, and we're gonna take them out. Oh, look at that carpet. That's not carpet. What? That's not a carpet. <laughs> silly. Oh, that's a carpet. That's not carpet, Maverick. That's called undercoating. You got a mechanic in training here. Right, caliper bracket is ready to come off, like so. 
Now we're gonna switch gears and get this rotor off. You are going to need an impact screwdriver to go ahead and break these screws loose. Again, I will leave one in the video description below and we do also have one in our Amazon store. So the one we are using is a snap-on. You do not need a snap-on, I just have one because I used to work in a shop and I used to this thing every day. Um, I will go ahead and link a Lyle or something similar. Um, cost effective, but still gets the job done. And the way that these work is you just go ahead and you put this in and then you give it a quick tap and it breaks the screw loose for you without stripping it. Nah, don't do that. The people need to see what we're doing, bud. Okay, and like so, we go ahead and take these screws out. Don't do that, buddy. I'm helping you. Yeah, you're helping me. Just help me by sitting right there. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and try to bang this rotor off. There is a good chance that we're gonna have to retract the parking brake shoes a little bit. Um, I always like to try getting them off without doing that first because it's kind of a pain in the butt. So we're just gonna go ahead and give it a quick tap here. And you'll see we already broke it loose and it came right off. Perfect. Now we're just gonna use some brake parts cleaner here. And just very lightly clean off the parking brake shoes. Just like that. Now we're ready for our new rotor. All right guys, here's our nice shiny new rotor. You are just gonna wanna make sure that you align your screw holes here with where they go in relation to the hub so that we can put them back in like so. Now we can take our two screws and replace them. Yeah, that's the old wheel, but it's the new one too because it's going back on. Just like so, we're gonna go ahead and put these screws back in. So when I put these back in, I'll tighten them by hand. I'll snug them up and then I'll just give them one quick tap to put the icing on the cake. Done deal. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go over to the toolbox and we're gonna start to service that brake uh, caliper bracket for reinstallation. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and service this caliper bracket. First and foremost, we wanna make sure that these pins move nice and freely. And as you saw, they do. I damn near pulled that one out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver and we're going to remove this old hardware, place it aside. And then we're going to use a wire brush here and we're going to clean this up so that there is a nice fresh surface for the new hardware to sit like so. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and pull these pins out and we're gonna use a very little bit of Wagner brake parts lubricant. This is silicone. And we're just gonna go ahead and give it a little dab and seal it back up. Same thing on this side. Just a nice little dab. Freshen it up a little bit. And seal it up. So now we can take our new hardware that your brake pads should come with. If you got halfway decent ones, they will come with these. And push them into place like so. Sometimes they need a little bit of assistance, but they should go in nonetheless. Okay. Yes, buddy. Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and tap that one into place. And now we're gonna go ahead and over to the car and reinstall this. Now one thing that's worth mentioning here that I didn't realize on the other side. No. Is one of these bolts is slightly longer the slightly longer bolt is going to be up top so that it grabs the caliper bracket. 
And if you don't know, now you know. All right, guys, so we went ahead and installed our caliper bracket and we put our pads in. We just put a little bit of, of that Wagner brake parts lubricant I was showing you on all four corners of the pads. And you just want to make sure that they move nice and freely <clears throat> so that they do not get stuck and wear out prematurely. Um, now, some of these aftermarket pads or calipers or whatever may have a little bit of paint buildup on the edge that prevent them from moving freely. Um, so if you have to use a file or something just to, to file them down a little bit, by all means, uh, you absolutely want these to move freely. So now we can go ahead, slide our caliper back over and tighten this up. Then we can move on to the other side. Don't touch that Maverick. Map, stop. Not when daddy's recording. There's a time for games and it's not now. What? All right, let's go to the other side. guys and we are done here both sides are done uh, one thing I do want you to notice is where the squealers are um, and Matt come here with that flashlight let me see that buddy so if you look the squealer is down at the bottom which is where you want it you want it on the leading edge of the rotor so we did go ahead and put the squealer down at the bottom on both sides. So now we can go ahead and put the wheels on, pump the brakes, and uh, always make sure you pump the brakes after you do a brake job, otherwise uh, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, but with that being said, we are finished here. So please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.